everyone and welcome back to the Brush and Bubbles channel. I hope that you're all well and that you're excited to do some painting with me today because we are going to paint a nighttime mountain range. And the reason why I'm excited by this is because we're not just going to be using paintbrushes to apply the paint to the canvas. So often when you purchase canvases, they come wrapped up and they often come with these little wooden tabs. If you happen to have purchased one of our Brush and Bubbles art kits, then thank you so much. And you will have noticed that these come with your canvases. So the real purpose of these tabs are to slot into the back of your canvas and they sort of stretch the canvas out a little bit more, but they're not a necessity. And I actually quite like using them to apply paint in some of our paintings. So we will be using these to add a few extra bits of texture to our mountains. Don't worry if you haven't got any, you can always use a palette knife if you've got one, an old knife from the kitchen. You could also just cut up an old bit of card or an old credit card, anything like that will work as well. So before we jump into our painting, I'm just gonna talk you through what you'll need to create the painting at home. I just start by covering up your table with some tablecloth or old newspaper. You'll need your canvas. I've got my eight by 10 size canvas here and I'm gonna be painting in portrait. You'll need a couple of different size paintbrushes. I have a medium one and a smaller pointy one. You'll then need your little wooden tab or a palette knife of your choice. I then suggest having some kitchen towel, a cup or a pot of water, a palette to pop all your paints in. Last but not least, your acrylic paints. I'm gonna be going for a midnight kind of sky, merging down into more of a green shade, but you can do any kind of sky that you want for this. I'm then gonna be going in with black paint for the background of my mountains and then adding white paint on top. Again, if you want to go more magical and more abstract, you could always do pink mountains and purple shades on top or yellow mountains and red shades on top. You can go wild with your own paintings, basically. So just set yourselves up, make sure you're comfortable and relax, and we'll jump straight into our painting. In my paint palette, I've got white, blue, green, black, and a little bit of purple. So we're going to start with all of our background first, which is going to be our sky. And it's going to graduate down from a darker shade of purpley blue into more of a blue shade and then into more of a sort of green shade, just to give us a slight hint of a Northern Lights kind of magical feel. So for this, we just want to pick up our medium brush. I'm just gonna dip mine in the water just to loosen up the bristles, give it a little dab on our kitchen towel. And then moving over to our paint palette, we just want to mix up the first colour, which will be the top section of our sky. So for this, I'm going to pick up a scoop of blue, move it over to a different dish on my palette. And then I'm going to add a little bit of purple to this and just give it a good mix. I would then suggest just adding a couple of drops of water into this paint. So I've just dipped the paintbrush with the paint still on it into the water and I'm just giving it a good mix in. Soon as you're happy, we're now gonna move over to our canvas and this is the fun bit. So we're just gonna start applying this paint to the canvas. So what I would suggest doing is just using backwards and forwards swooping motions straight across the top section of your canvas, which will be the top section of our sky. Make sure you're covering up the canvas nicely and then whenever you meet the top of the canvas just paint the top edge and also just paint around the sides. The great thing about painting on canvases is we don't have to frame them when we finished at the end. It's just nice to make sure that you've painted the edges and the sides so it's all nice and covered up. So I bring this colour down about two inches from the top of your canvas, just because we're going to be blending our next colour into this. So we don't want to lose any of it. So just make sure you're bringing it down just to cover that top sort of third of the canvas. I wouldn't worry as well if you get a few streaks within your sky because we want it to look natural and textured. So if you've got streaks, then just work with it and leave them there. What we're going to do now is just pick up some blue paint. But before we do that, I just want to add some more water to my brush, mixing it into that blue. And I haven't washed that previous shade off my brush. I've just picked up some of the blue straight out of the tube. And then what we're gonna do with this is just apply it underneath the section we've just painted. Again, just using backwards and forwards strokes with our hand and our paintbrush. 
And what I like to do is just leave a small gap before we go in and blend it. So almost bring this shade down, again, maybe about an inch and a half or two inches. Remembering to wrap it around the sides as you go. And then once you've done that, and without picking up any extra paint, just using the paint that's left on a brush, we can just go back in and carefully fill in that gap. And the reason why we want to do this without too much paint on our brush is it means that we can actually blend whatever we've got on our brush up into that previous colour and then blend the previous colour down. So it's almost like you're moving your hand up, overlapping that previous shade and then bringing it back down just so you haven't got any stark lines. If you want to, you can always go back in and pick up some of that first shade and then add it back over where that line was and just, just start layering the paint for your sky. As soon as you're happy with that, we just want to lighten up the blue slightly. So I'm going to pick them up with my medium brush, move it over to a different dish on my palette. And to this, I'm just going to add a little bit of white paint and give it a good mix. As soon as you're happy with your shade, we're essentially going to do exactly the same thing again. So just paint this new shade, which should be a slightly lighter, just underneath that last one, bringing it down maybe an inch or an inch and a half. Remembering to wrap it around the sides. And then once most of the paint is off your brush, you can then go back in and blend it in filling in that gap that we've left, overlapping that previous shade with this new colour. You can always pick up some more if you feel like you need to. You should naturally start to see some streaks in here just because of how the brush is being applied, or well, the paint is being applied to the canvas with the brush. So it's quite nice to leave those streaks in there because we are painting the sky. Soon as you're happy with that, all we want to do is start introducing a little bit of green into this blue mixture. So I'm just going to pick up a small amount of green and mix it in there. This should give us more of a turquoise shade. You can always test it on the side of your palette. If you feel like you need a little bit more, just add a little bit more in. As soon as you're happy with this turquoise shade, we're just going to do the same thing. We're just adding it underneath that previous colour. Bring it down a few inches. You can then blend it up into that previous shade of blue. We now want to do is lighten up our colour even more. So I'm just going to give my brush a wash in the water. Then moving back over to my palette, I'm just going to mix up another sort of turquoise light shade of blue. So I'm just going to pick up some blue paint, move it over to a different dish, add some green to it as well, and add a little bit of white to it and give it a good mix. This should give us more of a turquoise kind of blue shade. And as soon as you're happy with that, we're just going to paint that underneath this previous colour, bringing it all the way down. You don't have to come all the way down to the end of your canvas because we're going to be painting our mountains in over the top. Just bring it down a little bit and then again you can work this over that previous shade. We now just want to give our medium brush a really good wash in our water. Moving back over to our palette, we just want to mix up the consistency of paint for our stars. So I'm going to pick up some white paint and move it over to a different dish on my palette. And then to this, I'm going to add about five or six drops of water. We're then going to give it a really good mix. So you should have a very fluid consistency of paint. What we're going to do is we're just going to create some stars on our canvas and if you've followed along with any of our other tutorials of the night sky you'd have seen that we've done this before so what we like to do is fire the paint at the canvas using our index finger so you can always practice this on your palette or on a spare bit of paper before you go into your canvas but all we want to do is pull back the bristles of the brush while there's loads of paint on there 
aim it at the canvas and then we're just going to let go and we should get a nice scattered star effect. So just make sure you've added some paint to your paintbrush, move over to your canvas, pull back the bristles, aim and then just simply fire and as you can see you get these sort of scattered star like effect. If you find that your paint is a little bit too blobby as it's going onto your canvas, just add a little bit more water to it and it should thin the stars out a little bit. You can always fire it first at your piece of kitchen towel and then go in so you know you haven't got too much paint on there. Just make sure you're moving your paintbrush around and covering up that whole section with loads of stars. We want a lovely starry night sky. Soon as you're happy, just give your medium brush a good wash. We just want to have about a five minute break just to let everything dry nicely before we move on to our mountain. So you can either let it dry naturally or if you want to speed things up a bit and you have a hairdryer handy, you can just give it a gentle dry with the hairdryer. Once our canvas is nice and dry, we're now going to move on to creating the first layer of our mountains, which we're just going to block in with black paint. So for this, I'm going to use my medium brush, again, just dipping it in the water. I'm just going to add a few drops into my black paint and give it a good mix and dashing off any excess on the side of your palette. I know that this is the scary bit because we're now moving on to our lovely gradiented sky, but don't worry too much about this because we are going to be covering up the black with some white as well. And you can actually have a load of fun with this because you can do any shapes that you want for your mountains. I would just keep in mind that we want quite natural jagged edges. We want them to come down in different shapes. So I might bring it down quite steep in one area and then the other mountain might jut out from behind it. I'm just using the edge of my brush just to help me sort of create these, these shapes. Essentially, they're just triangles. We just want to make them nice and jagged and natural. And we want them having, having them come off the side of the canvas to so just wrap it around either side. And then what you can do whenever you're happy with the sort of shape is just with the black paint, just fill in this whole area. Now I know we're going over quite a lot of our green, but you still should be able to see it coming out from the dips within these mountains. So just take a moment painting this all in, all the way to the bottom of your canvas. You can wrap it around the sides and the base as well. So this is your moment to really sort of finesse and fine tune any of the edges of your mountain. So I'm just using that edge of my square sort of medium brush just to help me do that. Once you've filled in your mountains, we just want to pop down our brush with the black paint on it. And this is where we want to pick up our little tab or palette knife or the bit of card that you've got. And what we want to do with this is just pick up some white paint on one of the sides. So it's up to you. You might want to use the longer side, a shorter side. It's totally, totally up to you. And it's a little bit of an experiment. But all I'm going to do with my smaller brush, which is clean, is just pick up some white paint and add it to the top of this tab. And then what we're going to do while the paint underneath, the black paint is still wet, we're sort of going to drag this paint across the mountain downwards. So we're going to go from the top. I'm just going to start dragging it and you should get quite a scratchy like effect. With whatever implement you're using. So what you can start to do is just keep picking up this white paint and then starting from the top tip of your mountain where it's naturally going to be a little bit more white and snowy. You can then just start dragging it down in the same way that your triangles are going. So we're just going to slowly start building up these sort of scratchy like surfaces for our mountains. So just get the initial kind of shapes within there and then we're going to go back in and add even more over the top. Bring some right down, 
you might want some of the mountains overlapping the others so in which case you want to sort of swipe the paint down in front of it so you can see that this one comes down in front of that one just going to slowly start building up these layers and these textures using this tab Be quite free and jagged with your hand movements as well just to show that the mountain isn't actually straight it's got some movement to it you might just want to experiment with using the different edge so the longer edge gives you a different kind of technique, it's quite scratchy. Just just have a little experiment. If you're not liking using this tab, you can just go back over and use one of your brushes to do this. Just be quite scratchy with it. You can be quite stylized and also really abstract as well. Just decide while you're going which mountains you want in front of the others. So you might want this one to come down in front. So just make sure that you've really covered this one up however you like. Add in as much white as you want to it before you go ahead and drag this one down in front of it. Just so it looks like these are coming down from behind it. Taking quite a lot of white paint, going over to the side and just going to swipe this down. scratching motions with my hand. As soon as you're happy with your mountains, we can move back over to our sky because this is the opportunity for us to add a couple more stars if we want to, or a shooting star or a northern star, which is what I'm going to do. So for this, we just want a watered down consistency with our white paint. But I'm just going to show you on a piece of card and a pencil the sort of shape that we are after for a northern star. So to start with, we just want to do a line going down. And then from that line, we just want to do a line going across, but it's not going to be as long. It's going to be a shorter line. And then from this, we just want to do little sort of dashes coming out from the middle till we create our northern, northern star kind of shape so we can have this in our sky in the distance. So it's up to you what colour you want to do this. You might want to introduce some yellow into your palette and try some with a pastel yellow shade, or you might just want to go with pure white, which is what I'm going to do with mine. So with my smaller brush, I'm just picking up some white paint and adding it into the dish that I had for my stars, just because that was a much more watered down consistency, which is what we want when it comes to painting in details. We don't want to have too thick a paint on our brush just because it makes it harder to work with. So once you've loaded up the paintbrush, I would just dash off any of the excess on the side of your palette. I almost like to twist the bristle, twi twist the handle of the brush so the bristles sort of go into a nice peak. So once you've loaded up your brush, I like to just dash some of the excess paint off on the side of my palette just to bring your brush into a nice point. Once you've done that, we can then decide where in the sky you want your northern star to go. Bearing in mind that your mountains are still very damp with paint, so just be careful not to dip your hand in that while you're painting this in. But I might just do mine up here on the top right hand corner. So just prepare yourself, just move some space for yourself if you need to, and just start nice and slowly just by using the very tip of your brush. I'm just going to start by doing that line going up. 
I'm going to add a little bit more paint to my brush and do the line that comes down as well. You can then do the line that goes across. And then whenever you're ready, you can do the small little dashes that come out from the middle outwards. This is your opportunity to decide if you want to add any more stars in your sky. You might just want to add tiny little crosses in the sky in the sky to sort of symbolize the stars. And you can even pick some of the biggest splodges that you've got with your scattered stars as the middle of them. So if you wanted to do this, I would suggest using the same small brush and again, your watered down consistency of your white paint and just very, very carefully, just do tiny little crosses in the, in the sky. As soon as you've finished adding in all of the stars that you want and your painting is nice and dry, you have then completed your Midnight Mountain Masterpiece. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope you all enjoyed that and see you next time. Bye!